All right, let's look at that AVXL because a lot of people are interested in it. I don't even think I have a model for it. Let me see. Yeah, the whole Saba thing was like a little anticlimactic. It was almost too easy. Um, you know, it's never easy when millions of dollars are involved, but it's... Um, it feels easy after the fact, but I don't know. You could have easily gotten screwed on this stock when it, I think at one point it ran up to like a hundred or more. So, all right, let's look at um, AVXL. This is called Anavex or something. It's supposedly pretty similar. I think it's pretty similar to Cassava. <clears throat> dollars a share um, the cassava short was in the low single digit millions of dollars or I guess mid single digit it was a good trade I wish I could have gotten tens or tens of millions from it but I did not crack eight digits unfortunately I should have and could have I was going to put in more the week during, and I couldn't for whatever reason. So, yeah, where's Joe Springer? Is he going to make a video? Did you guys all subscribe to Joe Springer? He's pretty awesome, actually. All right, so this is actually a big market cap, 780 million. It's not small. This is just a MacBook Pro or whatever it's called. Let's see, where is it? Joe Springer. He's a number one securities analyst, so. You are a bag holder. Make sure you subscribe to Joe Springer. Well, he had a state of the Sava address. Let's see here. We need a follow up video. This drug really works. This company is a threat to big pharma, and there's nothing wrong with the company at all. And same with Rick. Rick Hold viewed on. a bunch more people coming. Dr. Gonzalez Yancey, since Dr. Yancey Gonzalez Rojas, talking about she ran the one month phase 2B, and then she also ran the open label afterward. And she said after months two and three, people started coming to her saying, my loved one is doing better. And this was her 13th Alzheimer's clinical trial. She said that never happened before. And then all the way up until Dr. E and all the other people we've interviewed, and now Matt Nachtrab has interviewed a bunch more people coming down the pike with their, with their interviews, but he showed a preview, including a guy who was moderate Alzheimer's disease, got his mini mental state exam from 16 up to 20, wow. and we can watch him play a sax solo. Uh, and there's other great stories too. That shouldn't be happening. This is a progressive disease until you die. Uh, we'll talk about the team and the fact that the third ranked FBI uh, person joined the team after all of these allegations. These allegations are complete nonsense. This company is a threat to big pharma and there's nothing wrong with the company at all. And same with Rick. Rick decided, Rick is a billionaire or virtually a billionaire. If he wanted to be on any beach or do anything, he could be doing anything he wanted. Does he want- I don't know if that's true, Joe. <laughs> want? He has the inside scoop there. He's on the board and he's now the CEO. I don't know if he's a billionaire. That that may or may not be true. And, and he would have been, he did the search for CEO. He would have known everything. So why does this guy that have everything want to become the CEO to get uh, legal problems of a fraud? It's nonsense. It always was nonsense. Rick and the team uh, coming aboard after all these allegations are huge confirmation that uh, this is just a threat. The problem is that the absence of evidence does not prove anything so something like that can be true but it doesn't make the drug work you just have to kind of not conflate 
those two things because it's very easy to conflate. All right, let's look at Anavex Life Sciences. They have $138 million in cash. Okay, that's Q2. Yeah, I, I've heard mixed things about Rick. He doesn't have a hedge fund anymore, from what I understand, for a reason. But I don't know for sure. I don't think he's stupid. But I don't know that he's a stock picking genius either. Uh, Excel is okay on Mac, it's not horrible. Okay, so Anavex. Blar Camacine? Blur. Blur Camacine. Okay. Indication Alzheimer's, my favorite. Okay, Anavex Life Sciences announced a submission of Blar Camacine, MAA, for treatment of Alzheimer's disease, to the EMA. First marketing authorization submission for Blar Camacine. Okay. Overall, Blar Camacine is a small molecule orally once daily, demonstrated clinically meaningful improvement over 48 weeks with a primary endpoint. What? That's not an English sentence. Can you guys parse this? Who wrote this? I want to, I want to meet the person who wrote this. Overall, blarcamosine, a small molecule. Okay, I don't. I don't know. I also don't know how to copy and paste on my own software, but that's another matter. Um, let me let me see if I can. I don't think all Alzheimer's is short, but so far it's been pretty good. I don't know, I've probably shorted like 10 Alzheimer's companies. Anyway, here's here's the sentence in question. I can't copy and paste it, so I'm just gonna write it. Larcamacine, a small molecule administered orally once daily, demonstrated clinically meaningful improvement over 48 weeks with primary <laughs> endpoint 8S COG 13, score being larger than two points. Okay, what the fuck does this mean? Help me understand that. I'll blow it up for you guys. Maybe it's too much. I'm just concerned with the English language the English language here. I can delete this clause to make it simpler. Overall, first of all, why would you start a sentence with the word overall? Blur, blur camosine demonstrated clinically meaningful improvement over 48 weeks with primary endpoint score being larger than two points. Are they trying to say that the difference between baseline or the difference between placebo? Yeah, I, I should have wrote clinically meaningful. I think that is what they wrote. I 
I know what a das cog is. <laughs> This is a uh, kind of a crackhead sentence. Anyway, let's keep reading. This suggests, again, terrible English. This suggests superior numerical clinical efficacy compared to approved therapies, uh, while also slowing neurodegeneration AD. That's also not true and not good English. The safety profile indicates not requiring MRIs, and the advantage is that it is a small molecule that exerts clinical benefits and should be could be appealing because it's easy. Oh my god. They need a, a professional writer. This is like the worst English I've seen in a while. And I'm not like some poetic like English writer, <laughs> but this is bad. I'm just gonna get some water. Sorry about that. Oh. No, I don't think it matters that they use like a uh, somebody who doesn't speak English well to write these, but it's alarming. This MAA is the first for oral blur camasine as we are requesting a review of the MAA with the aim to move closer to bringing this therapy to patients with AD worldwide. Juan Carlos Lopez Talavera. Okay, he is the head of R&D. Juan Carlos Lopez Talavera. Blood safety and efficacy profile could represent a novel treatment that could be complementary or an alternative to A-beta MABs. It is a remarkable milestone accomplishment, and this regulatory submission in the U.S. represents an important step in our efforts to potentially bring the first oral novel treatment. What? They just need somebody to spell check this and, like, reread it. Another insane, insane sentence. It's a remarkable milestone accomplishment, and this regulatory submission in the EU represents an important step in our efforts to potentially bring the first oral, ah, the first oral novel treatment Alzheimer's disease to the Alzheimer's disease community. What? Christopher Missling, I blame you. Missling, I would like to thank all involved and especially the participating families. I'd like to thank all involved and especially the participating families within our clinical development program. Where we have seen, okay, this is, this is insane. Come on, guys. Come on, guys, look at this. Read the sentence. Is my camera in the way? Can you guys see this? Have you seen this? AI would not make this mistake. This is a billion dollar publicly traded company. We're, this is the fourth grammatical error I've, I found. Where we have seen that, you don't need to write that either. We know what the subject is. This is really bad. Okay, anyway. It's not a grammar contest, thank, thankfully, or, or that would not be good. Acceptance of peer-reviewed manuscript of oral blarcamacine phase 2b3 data in a reference 
well, phase 2b slash 3, what is that? In a reference Alzheimer's disease journal. Chemistine for the treatment of AD results from the Anavex to 73AD004. Okay, at least that's a clinical trial. We can go off that. Chemistine. I mean, I just think you should have a, a person at the company that's like looking at the press releases and making sure they're accurate because that's just insanely bad. It doesn't cost much to get somebody proficient in English and biopharma to... There's all kinds of groups that could do that for you. They'll write the whole press release for you. You don't have to even lift a finger. There's a lot of issues, but the W-H-E-R-E -E instead of the W-E-R-E, -E, that was the main glaring mistake. Okay, so this is called Anavex 2 73 AD 004. Anavex 2, 73 AD 004, implying there's a 003, an 002, and an 001, possibly. Okay. Well, we don't know what journal it is, so it'd be good if they got that. So this is CTAD coverage, interesting. I'm using the Godel tool. Okay, here it said they achieved the pre-specified efficacy. In phase 2b, Sigmar 1 activation. Oh yeah, we should do a micro strategy too, because I I think that's a, a big short. Oh, wow, it's dropping a lot. Okay. Okay. I don't understand this clinical data. Is this against placebo or not? Because it says... Significantly slowed clinical progression. ADES cog difference 2.027. Um, in the ITT analysis. Got it. Okay, there's a presentation. Let's look at the presentation. Compensatory what? Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking my language. Oh, there's, okay. 30 meg, 50 meg, placebo. Uh, N is 168, 170, 170. There's a titration and then maintenance for 48 weeks. They have a name for the study, attention AD? No, that's the open label. Okay, co-primary endpoints. Great, okay, give me the results. 
the fuck? Okay. I'm not sure. Micro strategy is kind of like a little, it's a little bit dangerous, you know. Okay, so I'm assuming there's something wrong with this data, but I'm not sure what it is. Two points in 8S COG isn't much. I see that they lost 100 patients in the drug group. Oh, is there into... Oh, they're not combining. They're combining the doses. Uh, this is a good quiz for, like, anybody trying to uh, be a analyst in this space. Yeah, I looked at APLT. I didn't, I didn't think it was that interesting. So if you look at this data, the question would be what um, what is wrong with this data? What the fuck? Analyzing my image. Just put the fucking image in the... <laughs> put the damn image in. the hell? I just want to put a JPEG in, bruh. Wait, what the fuck? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Fucking Mac. Oversells. There we go. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, so here's the... <laughs> so here's the uh these these companies are so slick at at doing this to us at lying lying to us the lie here is that they're not telling you that they're adding up the doses i'm on a mac because i'm traveling and uh i use it to program i do have a windows pc in the corner over there but i don't have a webcam so Okay, so the, they went from, if you look at the bottom, they went from 298 patients to 191, which is a lot, <laughs> a lot of dropout. So how did they drop out? How many is that to drop out? Only 36. 64% of patients made it to the end. That's pretty unusual. So I'd flag that as a little bit sus, I think the kids say. Okay, none of this is working. I really hate my life right now. I'm not even sure they met their p-value, actually. There's something quirky about this disease. And you're definitely not supposed to mix doses up like that. I'd like to see the original, the original data. Participants below the plot represent subjects with non-missing data. I wonder what uh, if MR, MMRM has changed, what happens to the data as well. Uh, 
Okay, that's a very weird CTAD presentation. This is a different drug called Blair Camacine. I looked at this for like two seconds and there was a whole bunch of reasons why it wasn't real, but I forget what they were. Compensatory therapeutic intervention. That's such a weird, weird way to put it. I like how the entire presentation doesn't have any clinical data. That is insane. What a field. Okay, let's see. Looks like they've had this data for a while. <laughs> Man, I really want to get rid of these... Uh... Shareholder lawsuit things is kind of nuts. The whole, the entire news wires <laughs> shareholder lawsuits. <laughs> ah, this fucking Levi and Korsinski, man, they're beast. They're doing too much. The fuck? Where's the actual company news? Man, this whole company is based on Levi and Korsinski. Lost money on Avenex? Okay, okay, it stopped. Yeah, I didn't look too hard at um, Aspie. What is this? A follow-on analysis? So how long have they had this data? Since 23? And they, I don't understand. If you have this data since 2023, why don't you file it with the FDA? Oh man, more investigations. Lawsuits. I hate these fucking lawyers, man. Okay, here's the press release. This is from literally two years ago. No, no, that's that's not it. That's Rett syndrome. Okay, I'm just gonna go to their website. Yeah, I was short Amelix years ago. Not that far away, actually, but yeah, two years ago, whatever. <sighs> this website, oh my god.
Wait, so last year? I don't understand. They, f they started filing last year? And they finally filed this year? The fuck? And they said it was going to be published a year ago. And they finally got acceptance. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> These things take time. <laughs> okay, so a year ago... This is a follow-on analysis. What are these pictures? These pictures don't help. These mean nothing. Get rid of the pictures. They just get in the way of me getting my information. Okay, is this it? December 1st, 2022? It looks like it. Okay. This was the... This was the disclosure. December 2022... First disclosure of data. Five hundred nine patients, mid or high dose. Okay. Hold on, what is this? Should I call the CEO? What do you guys think? Call him right now? Excuse me, sir. Call him right now. I don't understand what you're saying, Jim. That's all I do. Patients with, we're 84%. Are they trying to improve the change? Okay, so this is a responder analysis. Fine. On average, patients... Okay, there's no need for a comma there. These guys are just terrible. Hello, it's Joe Springer. What the fuck? This is like, whoever writes these press releases is atrocious. What happened to this guy? Edward Hammond, chief medical officer. I guess he's still there. This is not the right guy.
Notice, where's the word primary endpoint? Okay. This is so weird. See, ordinarily, this would be like extremely good data, but there's just something missing here. It's just very bizarre. Wow, MicroStrategy is getting smoked. I covered some cassava today, but I might short it again just because, like, they don't have that much cash. Tar's at 51, wow. Okay, so do these guys do conference calls? Because what I want to know is why wouldn't you file with the FDA? I think there's a Seeking Alpha report about these guys. Oh, I actually have it here. Okay. I wasn't even looking for it. That's funny. Guy's written so many different articles. No, I don't want the Black Friday, damn it. Do I have to pay? Do I have to pay? I'll pay. I just don't want to pay on, on screen. Don't do it. I feel bad. This person worked hard. Oh, well, yeah, where does ADCS AS, ADL? That's, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. 
So they, I see, I see, I see, I see. Pro primary endpoint changed from ADAS cog plus ADCS ADL. to ADAS COG plus CDR some of boxes. Uh, Jim, don't be like the cassava people, dude. I I'm a professional. I know how to analyze a company. Don't be like the cassava people, man. I don't need your help. I know what I'm doing. Don't ban them, but just, you know, this, this, I've, not, I've been doing this a long time, man. <laughs> I know a lot about the FDA and, and Alzheimer's. They, they've never changed anything for approval. CDR sum of boxes, you can use ADAS COG, you can use ADL, you can use, there's IAGRS, which they approved Lucanumab, and I'm sorry, Denanumab on as well. So don't, you know, don't try to inform me unless you really know. We don't, we don't need another Joe Springer. Hey, what's up, Humphrey? Uh, doing it with my girlfriend. I missed a few things. Okay, Jim. How much money did you make on cassava? I didn't have the chance to write it all, actually. I had to get it out because I, I knew the data was coming. Did you know the data was coming? You don't have to time him out. You... Don't be mean. Don't be mean. It still says primary endpoint ADC S A D L. Oh, so they changed. Or analysis or or the, the p values you showed was always the pooled against the placebo or did you just have one arm against placebo defined as primary? Thank you for the question. The plan remains to analyze both treatment arms against placebo separately. The reason the only reason I presented aggregate data today is the limitations of the timeline in getting the data set to Anavex. As I say, database lock was two weeks ago. Anavex received the data yesterday, and I received this slide set within the last hour. So that, that will all count in the fullness of time, I think. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is uh, my colleague, uh, Michelle Barrel, who um, will speak to us on the subject of, of PET. Um, that was shady. Adder, along with other analyses, will be presented Who's in due course. Adder, along with other analyses, will be presented in due course. So, our top line data in relation to this study: the baseline characteristics of the patient population are presented. Okay, so this was the data before. So 
So they're saying this changed from meeting to meeting, which it should not change. But if there's a change, explanation change, that's, you know, a good explanation. Sometimes it's, you know, I gotta be open minded. Okay. Let's go to the YouTube. Nope. Uh, this. Nope. God damn it. There it is. Presented here. You can see that they're relatively well matched across all three treatment arms of the study, both age, gender, race, use of Alzheimer's disease medication, MMSE and ADAS COG scores, and their uh, ADCS ADL scores are also reasonably well matched across the CDR summer boxes at baseline. So these were our primary endpoints, which I've mentioned, along with the key secondary endpoint top-line data in relation to efficacy are as follows. Uh, if you did improve cognitively during the study, you were 84% more likely to improve cognition if you were assigned to the active treatment group on this trial uh, at, across a 48-week uh, study period. And the mean improvement in those who received Anavex 273 and who did improve they had a mean ADAS COG improvement of about four points, which is clinically as well as statistically significant. In the ADCS ADL, if you, were, if you maintained or improved function over the 48 week study period, you're 167% more likely to have improved if you were assigned to the active treatment arm of the study. We haven't passed the results between the 50 and, milligram, and, 50 and 30 milligram dose uh, study arms at this stage. But in the 2A study, there was a clear advantage towards those who could tolerate higher doses. Okay. In the ADAS call, okay, hold uh, on, hold on. This is the data we care about. Okay. So, yeah, I'll put this in the GitHub. Okay. Let's see. And who's the guy speaking anyway? Oh, is this Matt Nactrab? What? No. How the? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> How the fuck? Oh, Mark Andreessen is on Joe Rogan. Great. The fuck? <laughs> okay. They also do standard error instead of standard deviation, which is funny. I know another company that did that. There's some good books to get into biopharma. Some of the other people here can tell you which ones I recommend. Okay. P value 0 0.033. Well, I can actually calculate this p value myself. Without the covariates, but it's Mad Neck Trap back again. Okay, but didn't they have this baseline right here? Look at this chat. You have ADAS COG total score mean 30.25 and 28.75. So. They changed this? 
or they did some RRMR or like some other Yeah, I think it's Rosenbaum. Okay, this, so this adjustment was sort of the same for both. And let's see. The change was 1.3 on 8S cog. But there it says 1.85. Hold on, I must have put the data in incorrectly. Chat, are you seeing this? Can you do 30.36, put that in your calculator. Does anybody have a calculator? 30.36. Minus 27.62. I'll wait. 30.36 minus 27.62. Anybody have a calculator? 30.36 minus 27.62. Okay, looks like a lot of the independent statisticians I've consulted agree that 2.74 is the correct number. And in fact, it is not 2.26. My D. <laughs> My man. Why you lying? Are you fucking lying, bro? Come on, bro. Okay, I just... I got more, more to do here. Let's see. It's a little odd. See that chat? Is that number more or less than 0.05? Does anybody know? understand, Jim. I'm going to give this some benefit of the doubt. A publication would make a lot, would make it a lot better. But like this company can't write a press release correctly. They can't do clinical trials correctly. It's just not, it's not a good look. Maybe that's the opportunity, right? Yeah, even on the slide, they, they have the wrong number for the top. And that's why I'm trying to figure out if there's some, like, other adjustment or covariate that they're doing. Showed a slowing in cognitive decline by 45% compared to placebo at the 48-week time point, 
and the mean difference in ADAS COG score change was 1.85 points uh, in favor of active drug compared to placebo. Like this is not stuff you would just like get wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't just get something that important wrong, you know? The secondary endpoint using the CDR sum of boxes uh, decline was 27% less across both treatment arms than it was for the placebo arm with a mean treatment difference in score of 0 0.4. And why wouldn't they file with, with the FDA? Like, of course they would file. Or two points on the CDR sum of boxes, again, with a significant p-value associated with that. It's an Aussie accent. In terms of safety, it was uh, a design built into the study whereby, despite patients being randomized to placebo 30 or 50 milligram arms, the investigators at each site had the ability to up titrate or down titrate within the study period, according to tolerability of the drug. We found that a large proportion of patients on both treatment arms did tolerate up titration to the target dose, uh, with significant numbers and not experiencing a down titration episode during the maintenance phase of the study. In terms of adverse events and tolerability, there are high rate of adverse events in any Alzheimer's disease population, both across placebo and intervention groups. You can see that the broad rates of treatment emergent adverse events between placebo and both active treatment arms was roughly similar. There were higher rates of serious treatment emergent adverse events in the intervention arms, however. We'll come to that. And there were two deaths during the course of the study as well, one in the placebo arm and one in uh, one of the treatment arms. These were both felt to be unrelated to treatment. So the first death in the placebo group was due to progression of the underlying disease. The patient with the uh, posterior portal atrophy variant of uh, Alzheimer's disease and the patient who passed in the active arm died from a urinary tract infection that evolved into neurosepsis. There were significant uh, rates of certain adverse events that differentiated the treatment arms and placebo arm, in particular rates of dizziness and the emergence of confusional states were more common in the treatment arms. I guess that's to be expected with a CNS active drug and it shows a degree of target engagement there. But uh, the adverse events that had a prevalence of 7.5% uh, or more, the dizziness and confusional state were predominantly mild and moderate in severity and were managed by down titration. Also in the study, we used uh, morning dosing for the patients in, the, in all treatment arms and uh, for future studies, we'd like to change the noctate dosing to minimize the emergence in particular of dizziness as a treatment prevention adverse events. Uh, confusional state, perhaps you might think it's surprising, but uh, a number of patients who are prescribed colonisterase inhibitors will also become confused. So uh, it's not necessarily a, uh, a flaw that's unique to this treatment drug by any means. So the safety findings in the study were consistent with what we observed from a to a study and uh, not particularly out of the ordinary for a CNS drug in this uh, particular population. There are a number of patients who did make use of the up titration and down titration ability that's retained within the protocol. Uh, the dose was changed in uh, a significant number of active treatment patients compared to those who received placebo, but the number of drug withdrawals during the maintenance phase of the study uh, was less than 6% in the, the treatment arms. We can see the main reasons for drug being withdrawn during this maintenance phase were the occurrence of dizziness in 3.7% of the treatment population and uh, confusional states in 2% of uh, both treatment arms as well. In summary, we had a drug that seems to actively engage with the sigma-1 receptor and through a fairly large-scale phase 2b3 interventional study controlled by placebo, uh, we're pleased to have shown a significant decrease in both cognitive decline at 48 weeks and, and a decrease in levels of functional impairment as measured by the ADCS ADL, uh, along with a significant uh, decrease in, uh, in worsening on the CDR sum of boxes. Again, very top-line results. I apologise for the lack of detail, but it's a function of the time within which uh, we were able to get some useful data uh, following database lock uh, as recently as two weeks ago. Uh, thank you for your attention and we'll look forward to seeing further development of this drug. Uh, the company plans to publish a, a full analysis of all of the variables that were accounted for in the study, including whole genome analysis, analyses that are specific to possession of the Sigma-1 wild type versus the mutation as well as biomarkers on neurodegeneration. And there's a, a forthcoming publication in a peer-reviewed journal at which uh, those data will be revealed. Uh, it's important to note that people who completed the double-blind study were eligible to roll over into an open-label extension phase called attention AD. Uh, that continues and will follow up patients who completed the double-blind phase for a total of some 96 weeks. And the company plans to meet with uh, regulatory authorities to determine the next steps in the development of this potentially important compound. I'd like to end by acknowledging the contributions of the principal investigators at each site, as well as the study site staff, the Data, data Safety Review Committee, uh, the Antibiotic Scientific Advisory Board, and of course, uh, most of all, to those patients and carers who gave up the time, effort, and energy to participate in clinical trials such as this and to produce meaningful results. Thank you for your attention. So is this, who is this guy? Who is the guy speaking? Anybody know? I was, I was wondering if there was a statistically significant difference between the ADS COG scores between placebo and drug groups at the end of the study. I think uh, one of the slides spoke. This guy's 100% short seller. To that, there was uh, a statistically significant difference of about 45% from memory between the uh, the aggregate treatment arms, whether they were 30 or 50 milligrams. It's not been passed down to that extent yet. And those who received placebo, so yes, there was. Okay. Can I have one question? Frank Weber, Zurich Life Science Consultants. Um, you had a one to one to one randomized study, three arms. But then you pulled the two arms against placebo. 
And was that your predefined primary analysis or or the, the p-values you showed was always the pooled against the placebo or did you just have one arm against placebo defined as primary? Thank you for your question. The plan remains to analyze both treatment arms against placebo separately. The reason, the only reason I presented aggregate data today is the limitations of the timeline in getting the data set to Anadex. Say database locked two weeks ago. Anadex received the data yesterday and I received this slide set within the last hour. So that, that will all count in the fullness of time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker is uh, my colleague, um, okay. Michelle Merrill. Okay. Wow. Um, that is a okay. thing. Um, well, we'll see how that goes. Someone say Brodkin? Brodkin here? Is that Brodkin? That's hilarious. Okay. Yeah, so this is some this is some really crazy shit right here. Who is long this thing? It's another question. Yeah, I don't want to do in more Alzheimer's shorts, dude. I'm tired. I'm tired. Stressed. I don't need this. Just when they... Just when they thought. Okay, so we got BlackRock. What's NWAM? I want to see what that is. Oxif? There's no healthcare people in here. Just some quants and some indexers. So I guess mostly retail. Um, okay. Subtraction. Subtraction is difficult. Mean of all the individual changes.
Mm. At AAIC, they said that this happened, which is pretty bad p-value. I'm still curious how they got so close on ADAS COG, because... Ooh, Sava's in shorting territory again. Anything above four bucks, I think, is a short. Oh, is it locate problem or is it past? What's the problem here? Uptick rule? Come on, someone do an uptick. Buy 100 shares for me. Give me an uptick. Give me a quick little uptick, guys. I need it. Buyout. Buyout. Buyout? Buyout. Fucking buyout. He's already dead. Okay, yeah, this Anavex thing is mostly bullshit. I'd really like to see the the paper on that phase three. Playoffs. Playoffs? <laughs> Playoffs? Playoffs? This is such a crack-headed situation with Anavex. Like, these guys are just, like, making, making shit up along the way. I love this. Different number of patients included in... Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. 154 and 108, 154 and 109, 144 and 83, 144 and 85. I like what you're doing there. Just a couple patient change, not that big a deal. Stop fucking crying so much.
There is a free tier for Godel. SEC come for me? Why? They gotta go after these guys. They already did, I guess. Sometimes you have to short um, the stock right before. Sometimes you have to wait years. Um, I am living life to the fullest, by the way. Cham champagne is not living life to the fullest. That might be what you consider living life to the fullest, but it's not what I consider being living life to the fullest. We got filled in Sava at four dollars. Nice. Let's keep going, maybe. Oh, nice. I might cover some micro strategy because. I don't really know the company that well. I can do a model for you guys to see what their story is, but I don't know. That's a big position for a company I don't really understand. Just seemed like a meme, you know? Um, let's see. Uh, I've never taken finasteride, no. No, there's a there's a free tier, not the trial. There's literally a free tier. You do not need to pay to use Godel. And I don't want to hear you saying otherwise because you're lying. You lie. Um, we should look at Amgen too, but I'm I'm very puzzled by this AVXL man. This is just fucking weird. It's very similar. Very, 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 very similar to our friend Cassava. Was this 003 or 002? This was 002. Dr. Gupta is doing fine. What do you mean, what happened? <laughs>
Oh, that's funny. I didn't know uh, the molecule was similar. I use all kinds of computers, man. Yeah, I have to figure out what we want to do with Gupta. But Neitz is doing really well. Whoa. What did you get done this week? And in the context of Silicon Valley companies, that was a provocative statement because a lot of Silicon Valley companies take months or years to do anything. But imagine that statement being applied to the government. Oh my God. Right, like the level of like accelerated time, like, okay. Twitter people are crazy.
Yeah, the N of X thing is really fascinating. I, um... This is like a super interesting stock. I'm gonna put it on my screen here. Focus. I mean, just because they made an error in their primary endpoint math doesn't mean it's uh, totally garbage. I'm not sure, Zach. If you look into how this drug was made, it was kind of, I looked a long time ago, it was sort of a trash, trash drug. CEO is on the paper, always a red flag for me. You want a live user's chart of what? Yeah, I think it's just very unusual. And the market cap is very high for like, you can, it's weird in Alzheimer's, you're either a 10 billion market cap or you're zero. And these guys have a billion market cap, but like, <laughs> Alzheimer's is a really big disease. You should be able to sell a lot of drug if you can get approval. So I don't get it. Yeah, temporal, why would I give you that information?
Yeah, I don't know, BS Cat. This data seems not, not so real. I like mRNA, yeah. That is, there's no multiplicity control rule. That doesn't make sense. What the fuck? It, it literally is different results for each paragraph. Sorry guys, it takes a little time to look at these companies and I'm just mystified by this one. It's like a Pandora and wrapped in an enigma, in an enigma etc. It's just a little, a little odd. Okay, well, we'll look at AVXL a little later, more carefully, but it's definitely a bizarre little company. I mean, there is some signals of efficacy with the phase 2B3, but how do you trust it? How can you believe it? There's just so much data missing and all this other stuff that I'm not sure I can... I don't even know how they treat the missing data, to be honest. I'm very suspicious. I do use the diluted shares outstanding. <laughs> 